Hi, Kristen Atchison here, and we're talking about sensation and perception. Today we're going to be talking about our chemical senses. So our chemical senses involve two different kinds of senses, um, and they're called chemical senses because they're, this in sensory information is transduced via a chemoreceptor, okay? So ver, ver, um, through a chemical sensation. So the first one we're going to talk about is olfaction. Um, olfaction is smell. Um, it's the technical term for smell. Um, and it tends to be really vastly underappreciated unless you can't, can't use it. If you get a cold, all of a sudden you realize sometimes how useful your sense of smell really was. Um, like other senses, olfaction is really, really um, subject to adaptation. So some of the best examples of sensory adaptation are olfaction adaptations. Um, so again, you don't notice that your house or your apartment or your dorm room has a smell until you haven't been there a while. Um, and then you notice that distinctive smell of it. So again, um, that's, a, that's an example of a sensory adaptation. Um, unlike other senses, however, there's a lot more kinds of receptor types um, than just one. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. The last chemical sense we're going to talk about is gustation, which is taste. Um, and what we'll see is that these are really very involved. And um, what we think about in, in terms of taste is actually more flavor. And we'll make that distinction later in the lecture. So smell um, is that olfaction, that chemical sense. Um, and really, it's enabled by a millions of different olfactory receptors that respond selectively to odors. So it's kind of, again, this key and lock system where we have a particular smell and it only fits a particular olfactory receptor. So if you're, say, trying to smell vanilla and you're trying to smell vanilla with an ammonia um, olfactory receptor, you're not going to be able to do that. That vanilla smell is only going to go through and through that specific vanilla olfactory receptor. So you have millions and millions and millions of kinds of these that allow you to respond to different odors. What's really interesting about smell, as opposed to other senses, it is the only sense that bypasses the thalamus and goes directly to the brain. Um, so smell has a really huge early detection um, benefit because it can get to the cortex quicker. Um, it doesn't have to go relayed through the thalamus like the rest of the senses do. Odor molecules really exist in these many shapes and sizes. And again, this is that key and lock system where different receptors are going to respond to exclusively to one um, kind of odor molecule. And smell's appeal or lack of it really depends on these learned associations. A lot of things smell good to you, but they don't smell good to you because they're universally smell good. They smell good to you because of you have these positive associations with them. Um, so things that smell sweet smell good because you have a positive association with sweet tasting good. Um, things that smell bad to you, you have a negative association with. Um, or it's unfamiliar. Um, and so really, whether you like the way something smells or doesn't, a lot of time is dependent on um, your, your previous experience with it or your culture's previous experience with it. And these experiences start before you're even born um, because of um, the way um, birth works and the way um, prenatal development works, um, what we see is that amniotic fluid changes flavor and smell depending on what mom eats. So babies are learning um, their culture smells and tastes before they're even born. Um, and so these associations really start very, very early. Odors can evoke strong feelings, memories, and behaviors. So my grandmother always used Dove soap. Anytime I smell dust soap, I think of Grammy. Um, and again, this is this is that effect that odors can have on us. And um, they can really, sh really pull you back to a place, a time, a behavior um, that you ordinarily wouldn't have been um, just like that, um, just because of this experience with odor. Now, odor really and our, our ability to identify odors really can change with age. Um, so we'll see that um, our smell, our chemical senses really just go down um, as we age. And so if you've ever, you know, 
eaten with a grandparent or a great grandparent. They're like, oh, this is so delicious. And you're like, it's really, really bland. Um, and you're having a very different perceptual situation um, than they are. Um, this is because um, age can really decrease our chemical receptions, both in terms of taste um, and in terms of smell. Um, Another thing that we'll see is that smoking can really decrease this as well. Um, so smoking really um, can damage our chemical receptors in terms of smell especially. Um, what you see here in this B graph is you'll see odor identification and we'll see that um, it really goes down with how many packs and over how many years people smoked. But then even if they quit, we can get some ability back. Um, and so again, we see smoking is really, really bad. And this is not just a traditional cigarette. This includes all kinds of tobacco use um, or all kinds of smoking use um, really does decrease our ability to smell things. Other diseases and injury can lead to um, changes in this as well. So smell is really, really a one of the most early warning systems. Um, because we become so adapted to odors, um, any kind of change really is easily detected quickly. Um, and again, because it bypasses the thalamus, um, this makes it an even faster responsive system than other systems are. Um, so this adaptation to this constant stimulus, again, you can just smell, you can't smell your house when you're in it, um, allows you to, if you accidentally knock on the gas or there's a gas leak to be able to smell it quickly, um, to be able to smell that change really, really fast. Um, so I came back from um, a vacation and I was putting stuff in the cooler into the refrigerator. It was a driving vacation um, and I happened to knock um, the um, gas stove and not realize I had. Um, now granted, we hadn't even been home that long. So, you know, I come back from vacation, my house smells different because I haven't been here. Um, but at this point, I've probably been there 15, 20 minutes and that newness of the smell had gone away um, because I had become quickly adapted to that situation. So that when I knocked on the gas accidentally and didn't know it initially, um, as soon as I was able to smell it, I I was able to tech that and turn it off. Um, so again, it was a really, really quick thing that happened. Um, and that was because I adapted so quickly to my environment, um, even though it had seemingly smelled when I came in, it smelled different because I hadn't been there. Uh, I was still able to quickly adapt to that and, um, and detect that change. Okay, so we're gonna move on to gustation, on to taste. So taste really involves several basic sensations um, in terms, and the, most of them are the ones you're familiar with. You learned in elementary school, sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. Um, and we've got another one that's been added, umami. Um, so, and they have different indications um, as to why we can taste them. They tell us different things about nutrition, about information, um, what our body needs to survive. So sweet um, sugar um, is a carbohydrate and it provides quick energy. Um, and so we have a predisposition to want sweet things because of that. Um, whether that's fruit or sugar, um, those things we have that predisposition for because our body interprets them as a energy source. Salty things, also a predisposition um, because it's a, an essential um, nutrient um, for our physiological processes. We have to have sodium in our diet. Um, sour and bitter, um, we can use those because a lot of times those can be potentially um, toxic. Um, same thing with spice, that's a separate situation, but um, those are things that we have to adapt to liking. Um, they're not something that we just immediately like sour things or we immediately like bitter things. We have to work towards it. Very few people who try black coffee the first time are like, oh my gosh, this is so delicious. Um, and again, reason for that is that your body's saying, um, are you sure about this? This could be potentially poisonous. Um, and so we have to adapt and learn that okay now this isn't potentially poisonous it's delicious especially when added with a various sweeteners and creamers um, and so again we learn these umami really tells us about protein sources um, and, it, um, and about information um, that will allow our body to repair itself um, and so again these really give us those benefits 
taste just like smell, really decreases with age. Um, and again, we'll see those differences in smell and taste responsiveness because of it. So let's do, make the distinction between taste and flavor, okay? So taste really is the stimuli. This is, we're going to go bottom up. The stimuli for taste, tastants, are molecules that can be dissolved in saliva, okay? And again, we agree that there are the five, sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and unami. Um, and there's tons of research and debate on more, that there are more tastants besides those. So unami has been added since I was a kid. Um, and so again, there'll be probably more added um, as well. And these are this bottom up piece, okay? Where flavor is not the same thing as taste, okay? Um, smell is actually the main um, contributor to flavor, but there are other contributions as well, including tactile properties of te texture and temperature, um, how food looks, um, what it sounds like when you eat it. All of these things are contributions. So this is really gonna be a lot more of a top down, flavor is gonna be a lot more of a top down process um, because it involves this kind of, um, all this sensation, this multimodal sensation all together. Together. So this is a really good image that shows us that taste and flavor are different things. Taste is a huge contributor to flavor. So that's that green line. And they have that broken down um, into those different things. Um, sweet, salty, umami, sour, and bitter. And different pieces of it. Kind of localization. Where in our mouth that was. The intensity of it. How long we had it. Whether we like it or not. Those components of gustation are included in taste. But flavor really incorporates, again, a lot more. So if something doesn't taste as good, quote unquote, taste as good when you're sick, it's really not that it doesn't taste as good. It's that the flavor is not as good because you can't smell through your nose, right? Um, if you've ever had that experience or if you hold your nose when you eat your favorite thing, it doesn't taste, quote unquote, as good. It's not really taste. It's, it doesn't have the same flavor because of that contribution of olfaction. How things look matters too. Um, so if something looks gross, um, no matter what it tastes like, um, whatever that taste information is, um, that's going to interpret our, our perception of it, that flavor of it. Um, how things sound. Um, if you bite into a cookie and you're expecting it to be crunchy or a potato chip and you expect it to be crunchy and there's not that crunch, that affects how you perceive that flavor. Um, Mouthfeel. So the texture in your mouth the spiciness, the temperature of it. Um, if you, it's your favorite food, but it's cold, the tastings haven't changed, um, but it doesn't taste, quote unquote, as good. That's flavor, right? Um, that, that not liking your food cold, that's a different thing. And how hungry or thirsty you are. If you're really hungry, you're more likely to eat something you wouldn't normally enjoy than you will if you're not. Um, and again, those are all kind of top-down contributors, um, whereas taste by itself is a bottom-up contributor. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is how taste and smell really affect our memory, okay? So the information from our taste buds um, really travel to an area between the frontal and temporal lobes in the brain. Um, and what's neat is that it registers really not far from the information, the area of the brain that receives information on smell, um, which interacts with taste. So these things are really working together. And this is because of their location and because of the processes that they go through, um, we really see that, um, that they really are being linked to memories a lot more. Okay, that ends our conversation about the chemical senses. Thanks so much.